morning, good morning, good morning. I seem to have got a friend out here. I'm on Ankerson Beach and the sea's out but it's coming in. And I am this morning at a shipwreck, a real life bona fide shipwreck. So this is the wreck of the Abana. So first of all, I'll tell you where we are. <coughs> it will all become clear when we come back to land. That's the Norbrek Castle. This is the new sea wall of Tanker's Home. So it's opposite Anchor's Home Park, the new park that's opened on the seafront. Just literally across the road, head across the road, and it's down there. So the postcode that you can use is FY51AF. And that's more or less kind of going to put you in the right place. Now, the first thing I must say is that if you do come out to look at it, you must be very, very careful of the beach. Low tide was at quarter past seven and it's about quarter to nine now. Um, so I've, before I've started, looked at this beach and I've worked out that I need to go back that way to the ramp for where the sandbank is because I do not want to get cut off. So this ship sank way back in 1894 would you believe and on our Live Blackpool website there's a whole host of information about the ship there's some photographs of it there's um, all the information about the event so you need to have a look at that and if you sign up for our weekly email newsletter while you're there um, you will get all the information about all this kind of interesting stuff. So there's a, a, a memorial to all the ships that wrecked. And I'm just turning around slightly now. Now we're looking at Cleveland. So the shipwreck memorial is about there on the sea, sea wall. And the Abana is actually listed on it. It's just at the side of the hall if you go and have a look you'll see exactly what I mean and we're round about in the same spot where the river dance ferry beached back on the 31st of January 2008 now if you're local you might remember that as well because that was a whopping tourist attraction for the time so we're just gonna have a little look at it and I'm gonna tell you some information about it and then I'm gonna start walking back to the shore and I'll tell you the rest of the story while we're walking. So it fluctuates, oh I'm not going in there, that's 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 sinky. It fluctuates as <coughs> um, the beach moves about because obviously the sand lifts and drops as the tide erodes it and um, moves it about. I've got my wellies on today, I'm prepared. I look a pican actually because I've got a dress on. I'm off into Blackpool shortly. Um, and it's going to be really warm today, apparently, so they tell me. So I've got a dress on and my wellies look a, look a cough drop, as we would say in Yorkshire. So this moves, well, the shipwreck is static, but the beach moves according to how the tide erodes and deposits the sand. So this is actually probably about as good as it gets. But just look at all the old beams when you think how old they are. They, I mean, they date back to, to sort of pre-1894. Actually, that shipwreck memorial is fascinating. I transcribed all the names of it um, last week. So you can read that on the Visit Cleveland's website. I'll put the links to all these things in the description below so you can follow them and and uh, read the information. Um, but there were, it, it dates back to the 16, late 1600s, the memorial, and you can see that some of the early ships on it were probably associated with the slave trade as well. And the sailing to places like... Um, Demerara and the, the the West Indies really interesting I mean it's it's just donkey's years old history that's literally sat on your doorstep and when you think you know I mean it's not exactly massive is it and they went to sea in a boat that big there's no wonder it sank 
goodness me. Interesting. You can actually see it from the beach, from the, the seafront. Um, so when you stood on the show, when it's exposed like this, you can see it and you will be able to get a good look at it. Right, we're going to turn around now and we're going to start walking back. And I'll tell you, while we're walking across this lovely beach, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the tale of the Abana. I'm just hoping that um, this is not too noisy because it's quite blowy. I think there'd been a storm last night, didn't there, that passed over, passed over Britain. Anyway, so it was sailing from Liverpool to Cervelo in Florida. And it was carrying 500 tonnes of ballast, which it was going to exchange to pick up for timber. And on the 22nd of December 1894, it was caught in a storm in the Irish Sea. And in the first place, it was spotted drifting north with its sails in shreds. And the crew had mistakenly thought that Blackpool Lighthouse, Blackpool, sorry, Blackpool Tower was a lighthouse, so they'd headed towards that. I mean, you can understand it really, can't you? Because, I mean, you can see it clearly from here. There it is, you know, it's lovely glory, North Pier. So, later, that same day, it was caught drifting northwards in a storm and it had got its sails in shreds and it was, was seen foundering off North Pier. So it had kind of, there's the ship, there's the shipwreck, look, can you just still see it on the beach? So there's the wreck and there's, sorry, I'm not trying to make you sick. And there's North Pier and the, the tower and, and whatnot. So it had headed in that direction. And then it wrecked here at five o'clock. We have a North Shore drift. In fact, as I'm walking, I'm walking, well, sort of easterly-ish. Um, we get, we usually get a, a southwesterly wind blowing which would push the waves that way. It's blowing a bit the other way today for once. Um, so it normally pushes the waves that way. And that creates North Shore drift, which pushes the um, beach, the beach material, the sand, the shingle, the debris, the rubbish, pushes it all northwards from Blackpool towards Cleveland. Um, so you can see why if they'd headed towards Blackpool Tower, they came a cropper and ended up here. Woo! Lots of seagulls. Fly away birdie. So the alarm was raised by the landlord of the Cleveland Hotel and the Blackpool lifeboat Samuel Fletcher at the time came out to pick it up and because of the weather it was so bad that the, the lifeboat had to be taken seven miles over land to Bispen before they could launch it so they couldn't actually slip it down onto the beach at Blackpool and just launch it straight from there they had to take it inland over the roads and then launch it that way so there were a crew of 17 on the Abana well, we're all rescued and the lifeboat had got a crew of 16 so you can imagine that boat it must have been packed and they were all taken to the red lion inn at bispam including probably most importantly the ship's dog the dog belonged to captain danielson who was the captain of the ship now you can see what i was telling you about making sure that you've got safe passage back because this great big dip here is going to fill in with water when the tide starts coming in. So I'm going to go across this bit to the seafront and then when I've walked up the ramp you'll see where we are. 
So the ship's bell and the dog were both given to the landlord of the Cleveland Hotel because he was the one who raised the alarm. And the bell is actually now in St Andrew's Church in Cleveland. So you could, let's, let's pick our way across here. Oh, pretty, the light shining on here. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, so you could pop into St Andrew's Church when it's open and have a look at it. St Andrew's is the one on Ruffley Road. So as you're driving through Cleveland from Blackpool to Cleveland's direction, um, St Andrew's Church is the one on your left just as you've gone through the main crossroads at Cleveland. And then we've got to a, a stony bit. Ooh, wibbly wobbly woo. Right, so I'm going to walk up this ramp. And when I've done that, you'll see where we are. If you know this end of the coast. The seafront park in here as well. Um, so you can, it's not free, it's a pound for an hour, I've, I've, I've paid for my parking, it's not, not gonna, I'm not going to break the bank. Um, so it's a pound an hour and you can park and sit overlooking the sea, let's walk around the other side of this chap who looks like he's doing some running repairs. Right, so now we're up here, you can see this channel that I was telling you about. So that is where the Abana is. You can just see it there. And it's actually in a bit of a dip itself and the water's right up to it now in the time it's taking us to walk back to the beach. So there's a channel just at the side there and before I came down on the beach I could see that that channel was going to fill this tidal pool in. And that is going to end up a sandbank and I ain't swimming through seawater at nine o'clock in the morning for you nor nobody. So we're back on terra firma now. You must, must, must only try to look at it at low tide and be very, very careful. In fact, even better still, just watch this video and then you'll not get cut off, wet, drowned, nothing. So this is the access ramp that they used when they were doing the sea wall works and they were doing the um, pipe for the Anxome United Utilities works. Um, so now you can see where we are. Let's just go around this corner like a teddy bear. So this is the main, I'm sorry that the sun's in your eyes, but that's what you get when it's early. This is the main tramway, so that's the, the Blackpool to Fleetwood tramway. That's the tram building, um, where the public toilets are. Oh, here comes a tram! Perfect timing, can you see it? Let me just angle that slightly and then it's not blinding you. So that's the main tram intersection. So that's the footpath and the promenade walking towards Blackpool. And this direction is where you can park and enjoy the view. You can just see that last white car looking that way. And that's the view. This is the, the little bit where the new sea wall joins the old one. So don't forget folks. Um, make sure that you've signed up for your weekly email newsletter. There's a link to it in the description below, so you can just follow that. All you need to do is just pop your address, um, email address in, um, and then just sign up. You need to need to confirm it's the right email address as well before you start getting newsletters. Make sure that you've subscribed to our YouTube channel. There's thousands of pages of information on our Visit File Course websites that we've been publishing for 10 years. So it is our plan to trundle our way around and bring all those 
bring all those pages of information to life with videos so if you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications when we upload new videos you'll get get an alert and then you'll not miss anything and we do put a summary of the previous week's new videos on our weekly newsletter so you have a lovely day from beautiful sunny anchors home we shall see you later in fact i'll just show you the boat before we go look so we're on the seafront and you can just see it there and it's just going to go under the water so in the 15 minutes it's taken us to make this film it's going to disappear from view until tonight have a lovely day see you later bye